they're not rare, like, like the Opus? He said, nah, dude, these are gonna be easy to get. I was like, really? Really? Yo, I guarantee you Clark's late. It's gonna be late. Um, say 54. At this point, if you're not here five minutes early, you're late, right? So if you're 15 yeah, minutes, yeah. I hate yeah. to upset everyone out there that's constantly late to everything. They hate it when I talk about how clean their cars are. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. So we're, going, we're, we're here in downtown Philly. Uh, we're at the Airbnb and we're going to, um, we're going out to Lancaster to uh, Amish country to see how they grow Pennsylvania broadleaf. So I'm excited to take you guys on that journey. We're here in Philly for the month, getting our uh, city culture. It's pretty awesome. Great city. What do you think so far? I love it, man. What's eight, what time do we leave? It's, 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 nine, it's 9 a.m., baby. It's 9 a.m. <laughs> I mean, technically. <laughs> Like, oh, how much would it be to get a little dicky here? You know what I mean? It's from Philly, yeah. It's town pipe. Turn right, huh? Yeah, I can't tell Lou anything. What the fuck? Oh, gets upset about everything. I waited till the very end and I had a few drinks. The very end. Five o'clock. <laughs> I waited till five. We're sitting down. He's like, I'm gonna have a drink. I'm just looking at it. this motherfucker. Stop drinking. You should have said something. So upset that that box didn't get recognized in the industry. But that was the best packaging last year of any cigar. Which cigar? The Reserva of Vintage 21. Brain, bro. <laughs> you know what else is going to rob your brain? <laughs> your attitude, bro. <laughs> Narcissist. Uh, He's a narcissist, too. I'm not a narcissist. Oh my god, you narcissist. Are. You don't even know what a, the word means. Oh, no, okay. No, no. You're the biggest narcissist oh, yeah. around. Yeah. You could be my son. You could be my drug dealer. Yeah, bro. right. <laughs> Dummy. You can't be my son. Come on. I don't know who won this Do you have any pumpernickel bagel with salmon cream and cheese, please? Hey, you want some pumpernickel, said, bro? And she said, um, okay, what kind of toast would you like with that? He said, uh, sour. You got sourdough? No. You have pumpernickel? No. <laughs> He lost it at Pumpkin. Why we arrive, guys? Uh We're here with Sherry, who is a nice uh, woman that works here at the what is Br place Brass called? Eagle. Brass, Brass Eagle. Eagle. Nice mm -hmm. place. When you're going out into uh, Lancaster County area, you you we told you we we're here for tobacco. Mm -hmm. and you told us that when you know growing up in the area, that you can tell the difference between. That's how much tobacco is grown here, that you know the difference. You can see the difference. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that a little bit. You can see the difference through the leaves. Some of the leaves are bigger, darker green. Some have thicker veins. Some of them, the leaves are thinner. Some of them um, are like a yellower color. You know, some of them, the plants grow big. Some of the plants don't grow quite as big. Mm -hmm. And the leaves, you know, the leaves are thicker. So, I mean, I, I, I think the point is, is that people from this area, there's so much tobacco grown here that people know about tobacco here the yeah, same you, way they would know about corn somewhere that's else. That's right, so. you know the difference. Yeah. You could tell there's different flavors of uh, tobacco out there. Yeah, well thank different you, Sherry, yep. we appreciate it. You're welcome, All thank right. you. You're very hospitable. Thank you. you. Gotta stop in here when you come out here. Definitely. All right. We are here today at Lancaster Leaf Tobacco Company in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We're here with none other than Frank Miller. You are a senior vice president. Senior vice president here. Um, Frank, we're here to find out about tobacco growing in this region. From what I understand from the books I've read, Pennsylvania tobacco is pretty much as important in the story of premium cigars as even Cuban tobacco to a large degree. Yeah. So we wanted to find out as much about that as possible. Anything you can tell us is greatly appreciated. Well, if you ride through the city here, you'll see a lot of old cigar factories downtown that have been converted into bars or apartment buildings. But back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, this was a big cigar town. Huh. And somehow they took cigar clippings and dipped them in molasses and started chewing them, and that was the birth of, as we know it, a loose leaf chew. Wow. Uh, so this area has a rich history in tobacco spanning back into their middle 1800s. Very cool. This was a very huge growing area for the cigar industry. 
we the, the the tobacco that we know we love from this area is called Pennsylvania Broadleaf. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we've had it on a few of AJ Fernandez's cigars, and we've had it on a few other cigars or in a few other cigars. Um, what can you tell us about Pennsylvania Broadleaf? Pennsylvania Broadleaf is a derivative of Connecticut Broadleaf. They're similar seed types, but Pennsylvania is a specific Type 41 seed classified by the USDA. It's, it's been a long-standing different type of seed than is used in Connecticut. It's a different soil and different environment here, and it takes a different sort of seed to survive the environment. Okay. That's why seed types are different all over the world. Okay. And so was that seed like kind of designed here or does it happen when you start growing in the area things change things change when you start growing and it becomes a specific seed type after you know you zero in on what you're looking for very cool now um what what do you do here exactly so i know what kind of questions i want to ask you i'm in charge of sales of leaf tobacco okay and so what kind of clients do you guys have we're we're focused on premium cigars so any brands that we might know of that you've sold to? Pretty much everybody. Okay. Uh, you know, we have a huge operation in the Dominican Republic and, okay. and other dark air cured areas around the world in Brazil and mm -hmm. Argentina, Paraguay, Wow. Nicaragua, Mexico. The broadleaf that you grow here, can it be used as wrapper leaf? Absolutely. Yeah. All day. Is there a specific cigar you know that it is used as the wrapper leaf on? I believe uh, some of AJ's use it. The diesel okay. line has Pennsylvania in it. For okay, sure. cool. That's very cool. Okay, so that gives us a little uh, uh, area to focus on there. Um, what, where are the closest tobacco fields that you guys work with? Two, three miles from here. Would you take us over there and just show us around? Sure. Okay, and is there anything that we should see here while we're here? This is kind of a transitional point in the season here where we're finished, we finished up receiving the 21 crop. Uh -huh. So we're in a, a lull right now as far as receiving goes. Can we see just like what, the, what it looks like back there? And sure. Like, okay, sure. And, and like things come in here and go out there? Right. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool, thanks. Yeah. See that. These are just type samples from over the years. So you grow a, a shade leaf too? Not in no. Pennsylvania. Okay. It just, and so over these, the years, some of this stuff yellows up. You know? So, okay, so these, but also like the wrappers will get darker as you ferment, right? Yep. Okay, cool. So as tobacco merchants, you know, a lot of the dark air cured tobaccos yeah. for cigars are grown all over the world. Mm -hmm. So we're a we're a hub for tobacco sales. So samples from all over the world come here, and we look at them and determine if there's any value to it and who might be interested. How do you do that? Well, we have people on the ground all over the world, and when they see something interesting, they get a sample and send it to us. And do you like roll a purito with it and, and smoke it and smoke see it. the flavor? Yeah, yeah, test it out. That's cool. We, you know, can cut tobacco up, we can smoke it in a cigarette by itself. We have a cutter oh, over here to chop stuff up. This this chops down tobacco? Yeah, that's wow. an old, old cutter. And you can make a cigarette with that tobacco mm -hmm. then? Wow. And there go. Is this a tobacco auction? That's a a buying auction in Indonesia. Okay. Wow. That's an old picture. But that's when the women, if you look, you know, they'll put a thousand women in a warehouse sitting on the floor sorting leaf by leaf. Wow. Indonesia used to be a big wrapper market for cigars. Now it's more of a binder filler market. Okay. This is kind of a sample room where we put samples out for customers and stuff. And this is already room. fermented tobacco? Yes, yeah. Now, will some of your customers in the premium cigar industry 
take already fermented samples and keep fermenting them or re-ferment them? Yes. They do that a lot. Yes. Yeah. They put their own special style. Slow fermentation. There you go. Sometimes Mattoon, you know, a little juice. Right. Uh, this is also okay. a party room. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was curious if that's Yeah, it's here. amazing. This is a party room? This is a party room. What we have here is, I don't know how this thing works, but... A big this mural? This is like a big mural in the history oh, wow. of tobacco in Lancaster County. What is this? It's is it a big a, press? That's a big bale press um, from the old days, I believe Brazil. And, you know, some countries have a mule, but this one would have had two people actually turning that thing to make a bale of tobacco. And. So the tobacco comes in here, and then you sort it and, and ship it out to your clients? Uh, Pennsylvania tobacco that comes in here comes in here in farmer bales. It's about a 50-pound bale. We'll try to show you some. Okay. And for, like, mass market people, we put it in a heat room and do a forced fermentation. For pretty much the rest of the population, we ship everything to the Dominican Republic for natural fermentation. Okay. So, back in the late 1800s, this was Bayuk Cigar Company. Bayuk Cigar, B-A-Y-U-K. Right, out of okay. Philly. Okay. This is where they made the Philly blunts back in the day. Wow. So this was a leaf to cigar factory where they received the tobacco from the farmer, put it through various fermentation processes, and they made cigars here. Wow, hand, by hand or machine? By hand. Wow. Back okay. in the day, you know, a Lieberman machine. What, what, time, what, what year? What range? Turn of the century. Okay. It's early 1900s. Mm -hmm. And this is all you guys still? So this is all us here. We use this as a storage complex. Okay. No production. There's a little bit of fermentation that goes on. Uh, typically, during receiving, you'll see wagons and trucks. They bring wagons with wagon. horses and really? trucks out here delivering tobacco. You smell that? It's great. It smells fantastic. So this complex is hundreds of a hundred years old, easy now. So this smell is burly tobacco, isn't it? No. No? It's dark air cured, Pennsylvania. Dark air cured, okay. Now what you smell is them turning cases that are fermented. Okay. Hey done, guys. Hey, what's up? It's it smells sweeter than I'm used to in most factories. Well, it's the front end of fermentation. Okay. You know, if you smell a lot of filler, you're getting a lot of ammonia. Ammonia, out of that's what I'm used to when I Pennsylvania smell. and Broadleaf have sweet smells to them, which is why they're so popular that's right amazing. now. It's hard to find a leaf with strength and sweetness. Yeah. I mean, I wish uh, everyone at home could understand. You, baby. This you is know. how the farmers deliver it to us in a kind of a rudimentary bale wrapped in paper with three strings around it. Weighs about 50 pounds, so a man can easily lift it. Yeah. But this, the smell in here is so much different than most of the tobacco. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Yeah, it's, you don't get much ammonia here. This is a nice cigar, by the way. Come on over here, Frank. So tell me, this is Pennsylvania Broadleaf. Yes. And it can get darker the longer you ferment it. The longer you ferment it. And what typically happens in, in the old days was we would pack a crop, ferment it, mm -hmm. and then pack it in bales. Okay. That's a very important resting period after it's fermented and packed is to have three to six months in a burlap bale. Okay. Why, what is breathe what is and age and the colors okay. even out. Okay. You can take some leaves with streaks and stuff in it, put it in storage and get them the out streaks are going to even out really it's amazing really so much amazing. tobacco is, goes straight from fermentation right onto the cigar these days so that's that's a step that's missing because of demand the breathing the yeah. relaxation of for the tobacco over time very important wow very important wow I'm impressed, Frank. This is amazing. What a piece of history here, too. How long have this factory's been in, or you said since the turn of the century? Turn of the century. Wow. Look at these pillars. See how they built a wooden structure, poured the concrete, and then tore the wood out? Wow. Now, this is like a bomb shelter if you need one. <laughs> it's five floors of concrete. Wow. 
Yeah, they don't make them like this There's anymore. There's tunnels that run under the street to the other side. Really? Yeah. Really cool building. Incredible. So this is where the farmers deliver it. They load it on wagons, bring it in here. We weigh everything up. Everything's purchased by the pound. What time of year does that happen when the wagons come? Uh, October, October, November. Okay. Maybe one day we we'll come back and film that. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Yeah. So what we do is take the tobacco from the farmers and pack it in these cases. Okay. For fermentation here. And that's forced fermentation with hot rooms. Okay. How you doing? I think they're turning cases over here. Let's go. This so way. when you say forced fermentation, you mean you're adding heat to that yourself? Yeah. We'll okay. Put it in a, you know, in the wintertime, it's cold. Here. Sure. So November and December, January is when we're fermenting it. Put it in these hot rooms. We pump heat in there and you know, oh, get the tobacco. Got working. it. Okay. So you get it started. Yeah. Start to get a little ammonia in here. A lot less than what we're used to in a factory, okay. I tell you that right now. So we ferment in the wooden cases. Now when it's done fermentation, you can't ship in wooden cases because of the weight. So we repack it in boxes like this for shipment. And here you got your beautifully fermented, dark Pennsylvania wrapper. Smell that. It's um, Just like mother's milk. It's it's sweet like a, like a peach or apricot that that flavor that we all love so much out of Cuban tobacco, in a cold draw. But it's also got like the fruit leather. It's a lot. It's very fruity. A little earthy. A little bit of chocolate. Chocolate, yeah, sure. Just in case you didn't get that, I mean, it's very fruity and chocolatey. Sure. Now that you said that, I'm, I'm getting chocolate, milk chocolate. I mean, it is beautiful. And so uh, factory's gonna take this and get it moist again and pliable and then wrap a cigar with it. The, there's glass on those slants that face the north. So back in the day, you would only look at tobacco with north light or light from the north. And after three o'clock, you don't look at tobacco. Wow, wow. that's amazing. There's Amish community, I don't know, four miles from here. It's pretty cool to ride through there. Could we do that? Yeah. So I also want to point out to everyone watching this that, you know, and, and maybe this is a little bit of a reach, but the fact that tobacco and corn are grown next to each other in this country, I guarantee you it's the same thing in Kentucky where they grow the, 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 the cured, the fire cured tobacco. Yep. Uh, and you're seeing it right here in front of you. The same, the fields, which what, what that tells me is one year they'll grow corn, the next year they'll grow tobacco, and it works like that. Well, what's bourbon made out of? So it makes sense that, you know, whiskey is being consumed with cigars on some level. They're coming from the same soils. Obviously, it's a complete different process to make these things, but I, I do think that, that it needs to be said that, you know, they're grown next to each other. Same terroir. Same terroir, for sure. Wow, look at this. Johnny, you gotta get oh, this. Wow, look, look at, at this, I mean. Would you look at that? Sweet. Just look at it. That cigar. How do you feel about it? It's beautiful so far. This is what we do. Yeah. We're, this generation of cigar smokers, are, they're looking for the experience, mega flavor out of their cigars. They're looking for unique things that these companies, they can't produce year after year. They have one you know, batch of this and a little right. bit of that. So we're able to get these smaller batch cigars that are- Packed full of flavor. Not, yeah. Not too overpowering, but- Yeah, got great. Some... Shout out to AJ Fernandez for that one. Uh, that might even be one of your rappers. Could be. <laughs> so but AJ knows how to do it. Good job, Abdel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here we are. I mean, Johnny, this is heaven on yeah, earth. Bro. This is heaven on earth. It is. So this is, to me, this right. is more beautiful than like the Caribbean or something like that. I mean, well, it's just beautiful. One thing we didn't talk about is how important the curing process in the barn so of the farmer. Important. So this is a traditional Pennsylvania curing barn. This is? Yeah. Wow. So as you see here, it's got a dirt floor, which helps with air and 
dirt can absorb moisture if there's a lot of rain, but also when the tobacco is hanging in the sheds, they'll come along and open vents depending on the outside weather. So the farmer is doing his own little on the farm fermentation for us to get that green out of there and get that moisture out of there. Tobacco loses about 90% water when it's hanging in these barns. Do you know the answer to this question? Why uh, fire cured tobacco or, or uh, Clark, uh, man, I'm just so bad with names sometimes. Candela? Candela. Why Candela holds the green in, even though it's cured at a higher temperature in some cases? It's flash cured to set the color. Okay, okay so that so locks it in. Locks it in. It's in a barn locked in with heat. The barn's sealed up, and they're setting that green color to it, where this is letting it age naturally. How nice. long will it take to cure tobacco by air versus butt if you're doing it quickly to get candela leaf? 48 hours for candela. Wow. Where it's six months for Six fermentation. months? I only thought it was two months. Wow, six months. And that's after two, three months in the barn here. Is this an empty barn? It is. Okay, so it's There's just empty. Nothing, you know, it's the they hang last it up. crop's gone and the other one's in the field. Wow. So this is waiting for a crop. Now, we passed some uh, plants on the way in here, and I know at some point they grow a flower at the top that they cut off. Is that correct? Well, you want to keep it from flowering, really. You want to stop it, per period, from yeah, flowering. Yeah, because uh, the flower will suck the nutrients. The, the, the plant's going to try to feed that flower. How do they do that? They just clip a small yep. thing? Okay. Clip off the top. Topping. Wow. It's called topping. Incredible. And, you know, the, the plant will keep growing if you let it. We like to stop them at 12 to 14 leaves, and that way you get the bigger, broader wrapper leaves out of it with some body to it. This is some of the most beautiful country I've ever seen. It is, isn't it? And it's very fitting that good Pennsylvania broadleaf comes out of here. So, I don't know what else to say this other than- This cigar just um, keeps getting better, man. Yeah. Really yeah, we get the good stuff. We do, we do. And you know what, the, the, the guys that produce these products, they see how active we are on social media and how much they talk, oh, I love this, I hated that, I didn't like that. And um, it produces more passion out of them. They want to make sure they get us their best yeah. stuff to impress them, you know? You're doing a good job on this one. Thank you. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Well. Anything else we can do? No, you've been a gentleman and a scholar, and I appreciate you very much. And I know that this is not the last time, God willing, we will be together, so. Good. Thank you. I'll, t I'll get you a link to the video when it's out. All right. All right, you're a movie star, so you're going to come out great. Look forward to seeing you all soon. Okay, thank you. Thank All right, you. have a good one. All right, you too. Appreciate it.